Hello out there to you. In this problem, we're asked to find the GDP deflators, which is just the GDP deflator value for 2018, 2019, and 2020. This one's a little different because we're going to use uh, 2020 as our base year. So we're going to go backwards instead of frontwards. Okay. Uh, so to get our GDP deflator, we want to know the formula. So the formula is the nominal GDP divided by the real GDP times 100, and that'll give us the, the GDP deflator. Now, um, when we do this, we need the nominal GDP, which is the current year quantities times the current year prices. And then the real GDP will be the current quantities times whatever the base year prices are. So in this case, we're going to use 2020 as our base year. Um, now, when you do that, we're multiplying the present prices times the present quantities. That's, that's going to give us some amount for 2020. And then when we do that using 2020 prices times 2020 quantities, we're going to end up with the same thing. So there, as a rule, the GDP deflator in the base year is always going to be 100. So we, we actually know that one right, right away. Okay. So let's actually do this in Excel because it's a little easier. So I've already copied the, the information here. Um, one thing that, uh, that we can do here is tell Excel that this is currency. I guess we don't really need to do that. Um, We've got prices and quantity for 2018. Here's a trick that uh, if you already know, that's great. If you don't, you can go merge and center. So now that's 2018. I'm just highlighting both cells, merge and center. OK, so now I've, I've made this table uh, look just like that. OK, so I want to know what is the nominal GDP and then the real GDP for each of those years. Okay, and so I'm going to write a formula. I'm going to hit equals, and it's kind of your choice, which you, you could do it two ways. You could either um, take, you could take the price of computers times the quantity of computers, put that number right here, price of, sorry, price of cars times the quantity of, com quantity, of car, quantity of cars, price of computers times the quantity of computers times the wheat price times the quantity, you know, and so on and so forth. You could put that number over here. I'm going to write it as one long formula. So I put these things in parentheses so Excel doesn't get confused. So I'm going to take the price, uh, the 2020 prices times the 2020 quantity, and then I'm going to add that to the next one. So the 2020 price of a computer times the 2020 quantity of computers. And I'm going to add 2020 price of wheat times this. And I forgot to put that in parentheses. Okay. Just want Excel to do that first. And then this times this. Put parentheses here. OK, so this right here is, should we round that? That's yeah, fine. Um, this is the 2020 nominal GDP. Okay. Now I'm going to copy the formula. No, I'm not going to copy the formula. I'm going to do a new formula. So in this case, the real GDP is actually going to be the same. Um, so it's this times this plus this times this times this. these in parentheses. Okay. And I get the same number because remember the, the um, so then we'll do GDP deflator. Okay, so GDP deflator is the nominal divided by the real. Put this guy in parentheses. So you don't want Excel to get confused times 100. We're going to get 100. Okay, so that's the GDP deflator there. All right, next one. Now I want the 2019 quantities times 2020 price. 
Okay, so 2019 quantity times 2020 prices. Whoops. Let's do the plus thing. Okay, we'll put this guy in parentheses. What am I doing? This is the wrong formula for nominal GDP. This is uh, what I just did was the real GDP. So what if I take this whole thing, put it down there, I'll just check the formula, see if it's the same. E3 times F3. Okay. And then what I can do for my F column, because I want those to stay constant, I'm going to hit the F4 key on my keyboard. But if you don't have that key or you're on a Mac or something, um, you can just put dollar signs in there. That's going to lock those cells in as that as those prices. Okay, so then nominal GDP. I wonder if I can just copy this formula right here. Well, let's see. We're just going to check. So D3 times E3, D4 times E4, D5 times E5, D6 times E6, and that, that worked. Okay, so I'm also going to copy that right over here. So that just copied my nominal GDP, the present day prices times the present day quantities. Okay, and then I should be rock and roll to do the same thing with my real GDP in 2018. Let's see. Get rid of the extra decimal there. Just got to check the formula here. We got C times the F quant or prices, C4 times F4. Yep, it works out just fine. So then I'm going to copy this guy right here and this guy right here. Okay, now, now I'm done. These are the GDP deflators. Um, the problem worked out uh, the way it should have worked, right? Because if I look at the prices, price level is higher in the base here, which is in the future. And we see like an increase in prices, okay? So it doesn't always work out that way if there's deflation. But since there's inflation in the price level, um, that's how we did it. Now, just in case you were asked to uh, do the rate of inflation, okay, so that formula is the percent change formula. We can actually calculate that in the GDP deflator. So from one period to the next. We won't actually know that from 2018 because we don't know what 2017 was all about. But we do know the, for the formula is new minus old over old. So we can take 2019 and subtract 2018 because that's where we were and then divide by our 2019 GDP deflator and then multiply this whole bad boy here by 100 and that should give us the rate of inflation so 18 percent inflation from 2018 to 2019 that's bad it's really high uh, and then let's go up here uh, 21 per now that makes sense because I'm going to a hundred right percent so there we've got if you wanted to make these into percents you could just do oh they already are in percents I shouldn't have done that just need to get rid of the yeah so these are these are already expressed in terms of a percent okay so that's how to calculate the GDP uh, deflator now if you were to go the other direction if like 2018 was your base year then what you're going to do is you're going to change the the prices to 2018 prices and then multiply the, the future quantities by the 2018 prices. So then this one would have been 100 and then these guys would have been higher than 100 because it was higher price level of those.